Good morning, everyone. So I wanted this live to be about um, reading candle jars for beginners, okay? Um, reading magical candle jars for begin beginners, as well as altar candles. So before we get started, I'm gonna just go ahead and type up here what the live is about. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So, Spirit wanted me this morning to discuss candle jars, okay? Uh, we're gonna discuss today uh, basics for spelled candle jars as well as altar candles, okay? Altar candles. We're not gonna be discussing um, standalone uh, figures, figure candles today because that is much, much deeper and that's really more for advanced users. Okay, um, so we are going to start with candle jars because those are the, the simpler ones to start with and they are the easier ones to start with for beginners. So if you are a beginner in candle magic or in starting an altar, you want to start with jar candles, which is why I created the spelled candle jars instead of having um, these standalone candles that you can do yourself. Now, the spelled candle jars that I make are both a root working because they're if, as you can see at the bottom they're root worked as well as a candle spell so these spells are done so that you can actually use the assistance of my magic while doing your magical spell okay but that's not what we're here to talk about we are here to talk about how to read your jars okay we are going to talk about today what your flame means what images on the candles mean, what lines mean, what does it mean when the candle burns clear, what does it mean when the candle burns cloudy, what does it mean when the candle um, has a lot of soot, what does it mean when the candle um, has a black flame or a white flame, okay? Um, I will, or uh, when you snuff out the candle, what does it mean when you have a white smoke versus a gray or black smoke okay so let's go ahead and talk about that um i am going to attempt to save this live hopefully instagram will allow me to and then i will repost it however if you don't want to miss this for sure i would suggest staying on here i know that there's a lot of people at work right now however um i will try to save it if not i will have to make another video Okay, the reason why I'm doing this live is because if you have any follow-up questions, I want to answer it here, so that way, um, because other people may have the question that you have. So if you have a question that is related only to reading candle jars, you can put, them in, put that in the, in the comments, and then once I'm done speaking on candle jars and reading candle jars, then I will answer the questions that are re relevant to this topic. And the reason, again, that I wanted to do this live is so that we have the questions and then this video, if I'm able to save it, we'll have those questions there when I repost it, okay? All right, so let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is the flame, okay? So when you burn a candle, you want your flame to look like this, okay? See how it is a medium flame? It is not too high, it is not too low and it is now it's dancing a little bit extra because there is a fan above it so i'm going to cover it so it doesn't get the fan so much your flame you want your flame to look like this okay it is a medium flame that is strong this is the divine justice return to sender candle that i make i'm burning it on my altar you want your flame to look like that or like this okay so this is an altar candle you see that the flame looks the same. That is why, that is because I have a constant conversation with my spirit guides. I am in constant communication with my spirit guides. So the flame is at a medium, tempered, calm, sometimes dancing a little bit, um, flame. Also, I constantly cleanse myself. So before you start candle magic, a lot of people will tell you, oh, you don't need cleanse. That's not true. You need to cleanse yourself. You need to cleanse yourself because you need to be a clean slate when you start your candle magic, 
okay? Whether you do professional cleansing or whether you do just a recipe on my YouTube channel or another recipe that you got for cleansing yourself because magic is a magic flows through channels of energy. And if you don't have enough cleanse cleanliness spiritually, it is like a pipe that has been clogged, okay? So energy needs a clean channel to flow through. So if you are not cleansed, if your aura is not cleansed properly, you are a blocked pipe, okay? It's like trying to put water or trying to put um, something down the drain when the drain is clogged, okay? So that is the importance of cleansing. So many people do positive works, such as Lucky Coin or the New Love Candle or love a return and don't ever actually cleanse beforehand. So what you're doing is, is that you are already um, starting the spell with the cards stacked against you. Why? Because you are not a clean channel for that magic to, to flow through, okay? Also, cleansing does a very important thing. It grounds you. It grounds you so that you are not desperate or hysterical or in doubtful energy or in fearful energy when you are doing your magic. If you are in any of those states, your magic is going to be pretty terrible, and it's going to most likely backfire on you, okay? Um, the only time that it's good to be angry when you are doing magic is if you're doing dark magic, and we don't talk about that on this channel. Um, because any other state other than calm, focused, collected, and hopeful, and faithful is already stacking the, the cards against yourself when you start candle magic, okay? So let's keep talking about the flame. So we talked about the medium flame. The medium flame means your candle is going well. That means your spell is being received by spirit. Um, your spell is being received by the universe and the universe is in agreement with the spell that you're doing. A very low candle flame when you first light your candle. As long as there's nothing wrong with the, with the candle. Spelled candles, even if it's a perfect candle, spelled candles will burn differently depending on the spell because I have burned over a thousand probably over five thousand candles doing works for other people and if I pull up the videos for every single person that I do candle works for every single candle even if it's the same exact candle burns differently per each person that I burn it for it burns completely different every single candle also it also it it's also based on the intent that you put into the candle, okay? Um, <clears throat> when you put an intent into the candle, the first thing you need to know is what is your focused intent? Because when you are doing candle magic, you want to have a focused intent. You don't want to ask for ten things out of the one because you're going to confuse your spell. You're going to confuse. Okay, what is it? What, what is more important for you is. Let's say if you ask for a raise, as well as a new job, as well as a new lover, as well as, I don't know, losing weight, then this, the spell is going to be like, okay, what is more important to you? So let me see. And it's going to get you whatever it can out of the, those. And sometimes it can fall on you and actually not even complete it because it's like I don't know what the intent that you are, you want what do you want from me <laughs> okay so you need first thing that you need to understand when you start candle magic or any type of magic is that you need to have an intent okay you need to have a clear intent as to what it is that you are trying to do this work for okay now when you have a low flame Low flame, when candles start with a low, low flame, I get, I get worried right away. Why? Because when a candle spell starts with a low flame, it means that you are already receiving blockages. Okay? You are already starting to receive some blockages. And there are some blockages that are going to be in your way for manifesting what you are asking for. So as soon as I see a very low candle, I start asking myself, okay, let me let it burn for a little bit. If it doesn't start to change, that's when I start offering things, okay? A lot of the time, too, a, slow, a low candle flame means that you didn't offer enough in exchange for what you're asking for. So let's say um, you are working with your spirit guides, right? Even if you're using my candle spells, you are still asking your spirit guides for help. 
if you're working with your spirit guides and you didn't offer enough, if they don't feel like what you're asking, like if, if you're, what you're asking for is way bigger than what you have offered, you, you oftentimes the flame will start with a very low flame. So what I tend to do is I first start to offer incense because first of all, when we do candle magic, we should really also be doing some incense, um, offering maybe a glass of water you wouldn't invite someone into your house without offering them a glass of water okay <clears throat> you want to offer them maybe some flowers and i've noticed that when i do offer some incense or some flowers or some water or some coffee to my spirit guides then the flame starts to brighten up and it starts to open up for you okay Also, you want to make sure that your area is clean, that it is not trying to resist um, cleanliness of your of your spiritual cleanliness, the spiritual cleanliness of your house as well. If your if your house, anytime you do any sweet working, when I say sweet, I mean things you want to attract to yourself. So you want to attract new love, or you want to bring back a lover, or you want to bring prosperity, money, abundance, protection to yourself you have to clean you have to do a hex breaker or a cleanse or some sort of um removal or burn some burn some incense that clears the energy out of your home um maybe use some clearing or cleansing baths you have to clean before you work magic that is this is what this is what workers will not share with you because these are secrets secrets of experienced workers that i am sharing with you because i want you to succeed okay you must cleanse yourself and you must cleanse your space because if you're not cleansing your space you have all this energy just settling and sitting there and not getting anything done and it, the the positive stuff that you're trying to bring in is trying to swim through this ocean of negativity and it's not able to get to you okay all right so we talked about low flames. Low flames usually means that there are some that you may encounter some blockages. That doesn't mean that your petition won't be accepted, but they're kind of like, uh, it's kind of like last priority because you're not really offering us that much in exchange because everything costs something in the spiritual realm. Okay, in the spiritual realm and the material realm, there is this belief that everything needs to be free. No, everything is an exchange of energy. So if you are not exchanging energy, aside from just paying for something, sometimes you have to pay for something and also offer an additional offering. Okay? Um, you need to offer something or you need to offer prayer. Maybe you're, you're, some, some of your ancestors might need you to pray for them for the elevation of your spirit. Okay? So that is important. So when you have the low flame, that doesn't mean necessarily that your um, that your spell won't be accepted. It just means that it's low priority for them. It's low priority because spirit has to work on certain amount of spells. And if it's low priority for them, that means that it may take you a little bit longer to manifest what you are asking for. So how do you move up? You offer what you can, okay? This isn't about offering the most fancy thing or offering them. A, no, spirit knows what you can and cannot afford. So if you're being cheap with spirit because you want to be greedy and not just because you can't afford it, um, then that means that they're going to be the same way with you. OK, that is why even in the Catholic Church, even in, uh, in churches, you know, when when they do sermons, when they do masses, incense is offered, music is offered. Prayer is offered to Jesus, to Mary, to the archangels, to God, okay? Because you have to offer something, okay? You have candles lit. You have, um, you know, you often you have the font of holy water there. So it's really, really important to offer something that you are, that you know in your heart. Really ask yourself, really, is this a sacrifice for me to actually just buy like a $4 bundle of flowers to offer my spirit guides in exchange for what I'm asking for? Or to, you know, or to offer a glass of water or to offer a, a glass of a, a cup of coffee? Like some people really think that that's too much. But we'll turn around and spend $500 or $300 on Jordans or something or Yeezys or whatever. So when you are cheap with spirit, spirit is cheap with you. So understand that. 
because there is a need for exchange of energy in the spiritual realm okay and the physical realm so that when there, when your candle flame is low that means your spirit guides are like yeah you're not offering me enough um so therefore this is low priority to me okay now when it's medium you want it to have a medium brightness to it that means therefore that you offered enough um the candles in progress the candles in good progress even if it's an altar candle um the candles in good progress and you will most likely see results usually within three months usually when i when i see a medium candle usually people start to see results within three months candle spells do not last forever Be they burn they, they burn quickly so therefore they last less time than root workings okay so you have to understand that too when you're doing candle magic that candle magic doesn't last as long so if you want to maintain the desired result of your candle spell you need to do another candle spell usually within six months usually uh within six months before you start to see it debilitating okay because magic is energy and you have to maintain the energy so um that is also really really important to remember okay now when you have a high hot flame so a lot of you guys i don't have a high hot flame to show you but a lot of you guys know what i'm talking about when you have a really high flame that is really really violent i've seen flames like this tall that have a black a black peak and it's just releasing a lot of soot and a lot of black smoke that means that first of all initially your petition was denied okay so spirit is saying initially your petition was denied there must be some major blockage in your way okay so usually these major blockages are witchcraft against you um maybe uh, generational curses or curses that you put upon yourself with your own speech with the way you speak about yourself and about your life um these could be hexes or someone who is actively working against you okay or who is actively working against your your work this could also be, especially if it happens in love magic, it, you'll, it could also mean that the person's spirit guides are blocking you. Because if that person's spirit guides are stronger than your spirit guides or are, or, are, or that person has a spiritual protection that is much stronger than your spiritual protection, then your work will be blocked from reaching them, okay? Um, there are i can tell you because i administer myself there are there are long-term protections that will not let certain spells through um there are and these are these are protections that take multiple days sometimes months to complete okay and when they are completed it is very difficult to get through that protection and very difficult for your magic to influence that other person so if that other person is more stubborn than you um they it may need uh some more time now when it has black smoke right away it doesn't always mean that it's completely denied sometimes you just have to let it continue burning so that it clears away all of those blockages because it will start to clear away those blockages a lot of the times if you just let it burn and you pray over it again and you re rechant your spell multiple times then it will and maintain your focus your intent will break through and your spirit guides will make sure that your spell breaks through okay with with a majority of the things now if that person has a permanent protection or they have really 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 stu stubbornness a stubborn mindset it may take either longer for the spell to get through or it will never get through to them okay so Whenever you see those really high peaked candles, really high flames, let them burn. Let them burn. And if you have to, light another candle. Usually when you get those high flames, I'm, I automatically know I might have to burn this again. I might have to burn it again. Or you are doing the spell too quickly. Okay? Sometimes you have to break up the spell over a couple of days. Because if you start to burn the spell too quickly, it's too brunt. It's too blunt for the person that you are doing the spell on. Okay, um, if you're doing a spell on yourself, usually it's not, you don't encounter those issues, but when you are doing spells for other people, to attract other people, or to, um, to persuade other people to do something, if you burn it too quickly, 
it can be too blunt and then that person will be pushed away further from you they'll be recoiled from you rather than attracted so it's really important also to burn it a little bit at a time which is why i also indicate to only burn the candle for three to four hours per day okay um but you must burn it for at least three hours per day okay so it's really important to understand that, that when you are doing candle magic Sometimes you cannot burn it so fast because you want fast results. What's going to happen is it's going to work against you because you are impatient. So if you are impatient, spirit, it's going to be, it's like you're just hitting that person with, with, a, with a clobber over their head. And then they're going to be like, oh, why, why can I not stop thinking about this person? I can't even, oh, stop. And they will, they will, they will willfully push you away. Okay. Um... All right. So remember, high flame, let it burn. Just let it burn. If if it's if after a few hours the flame doesn't come down, snuff it out. Never blow it out because when you blow it out, you are damaging your intention and you are pushing your spirit away from the flame and you are pushing your spirit away from the light, okay? So you want to snuff it out. That's why I that's why I put a metal lid on my candles so that you can use it to snuff it out. And then let it go for the day don't think about it come back to it tomorrow okay come back to it another day also i will be doing a, a video on the days of the week that are the best to do what type of magic because certain days are not good for certain types of magic okay um you don't want to do magic on Sat love magic on saturdays usually uh because of saturn and saturn causes limitations so you also, it would also be beneficial, even though in folk magic, we don't pay attention to that. We do in high magic to the days of the week, okay? Um, and the times of the day as well, because they are magically relevant. Uh, I will make a video on the types of magic that should be done on what days and the energies of the days, okay? In the future. All right. So let's go ahead and start with images. Okay. So when you are, when you have a good relationship with your spirit guides, when you are in constant communication with them, you will have magical spells that look like this. Do you see how clear that is? Okay, this is a lucky coin, business prosperity um, candle, okay? You will have that clear, you see that clarity? Now, you may have some images in here. Usually, see there's images, I, you can't really see that. There's tons of people here. Okay, so it, this is a business prosperity candle and there's tons of people in the image. So that means there is tons of people coming towards the business. Okay, um, so you will have images, you will have messages that spirit will leave for you in your candle. Okay, that's because this is mine. <laughs> this is and this is the same exact candle that I'm selling to you. But this is the one I burned for myself. The reason why I burned this way is because I'm constantly cleansing myself. I'm constantly praying to my spirit guides. And I'm constantly communicating with spirit. Okay? Now, so this is a successful candle. There is a few, there's, a little, there's a few images on here. Images are not a bad thing. Images are usually messages from spirit. And images are usually read the same way that you would read tea leaves or coffee grinds. Okay? So... Um, I read tea leaves and coffee grinds because my grandmother and my aunt are really, really amazing at it. And um, they are really good at it. And they are able to interpret things and everything comes true. Um, so I learned from them how to read tea leaves and coffee grinds. And that is the same way that you read the images on the candles. So if you don't, if you see a symbol and you don't know what it means, Google it. Look it up in the symbol book. Because spirit will talk to you in the way that you will understand. They will know that if you don't know what a symbol means, that you will go to Google and type in, what does an owl mean? And Google will give you, traditionally, an owl means wisdom. It means that you need to take some time to wisely think about something. Okay? So that is, so if you don't know what, a, that's why I also recommend that you um, read some books on symbolism and the, and the magic of symbolisms and the importance of symbolism. Okay, because there are symbols and there are symbols that mean different things throughout the whole world. Okay, so now if you're a beginner, 
and you're just trying to do this magical spell and you don't care about the you know deciphering the images as long as it burns clear cleanly and you you have or you have a little bit of images on the side like that you're good to go you don't have to worry about what it means you it was approved you can move on with your life and you can just wait for the results to come to you okay now but if you are interested in going deeper into what these images mean read read about symbolism uh, um you know you can book a mentorship session we can talk about symbolism there if you want to um but if, if you're really invested in learning more about candle magic itself i would highly suggest that you get yourself comfortable and knowledgeable of symbols okay because spirit will speak to you in the symbols that you understand because that is what intuition is that is what intuitiveness is okay now the the next thing so here this is was a hex breaker candle as you can see it's got a lot more deposit and the reason for that is because it was breaking a lot of evil eye okay so there was a lot of eyes in here you can't really see it very well but that means that it was breaking a lot of evil eye okay um there was there are some people on here so a lot of the times when you do a hex breaker it will also give you a face sometimes of the person who did the hex on you or it will give you a face it will give you a whole bunch of people kind of crowded together like here talking about you talking talking smack okay <laughs> there is three people right there huddled together talking smack about me so um <laughs> that it shows up in the candle okay and that doesn't always mean that somebody's necessarily doing active magic against you but even when someone speaks negatively about you it goes into the universe and because we're all connected it can affect okay um now there's also some images here of my spirit guides watching over me so sometimes you will see images of your spirits as well okay so that's why i always say people can talk all they want i know i can hear spirit is the biggest snitch especially archangel michael um <laughs> uh, they always show you who has malintent you just need to listen and pray and pay attention okay all right um now this is a protection candle protection candles see this one tunneled here Protection candles have a tendency to do that. That is because the first thing that that protects that spirit thinks about when they think about protection is a wall, building a wall around you. Okay. So oftentimes, when you build a, a candle, uh, when you burn a candle that is specifically for protection, and this happens even when I burn the the pillar standalone candles, it will tunnel down and the outsides will stay on, will stay high. And that is because it is burning, it is building a wall around you. So if you are burning a protection candle in a tunnel, it actually is a good thing. Not always is tunneling a good thing. Not when you are doing like a love candle or when you're doing money candle, you don't want it to tunnel. But if it ha it is a protection candle and it tunnels, it's not a bad thing. Also, when you're doing a protection candle, um, it could either tunnel, meaning that it was, pro it, it was, it is working, or it could just burn completely clear, okay? Um, which also means that, that it was approved. But most of the time, most of my experiences with protection candles have been that they do tunnel. Okay? Um, but that doesn't always... And this, but also, keep in mind, with jar candles, if you don't turn them on, especially with soy, if you don't keep them on long enough, they will tunnel. Okay? Um, aside from it being spiritual, they will tunnel if you don't keep them on long enough because soy has memory it has burn memory which means that it will burn to the last level that you burned it last so if you only burned it to where it got to right before the outside of the candle um it will continue burning that way okay but protection candles i, I every time i do a protection candle it does have a tendency to do that to build a wall around itself um because you are building a wall of protection around yourself okay all righty so let's go ahead and go on to so we talked about flames we talked about images understanding that images you you may understand right away what the image means or you may have to look it up uh so spirit will guide you to where to find the answer now the next thing i want to talk about is lines so here is an altar candle this is actually more of a cemetery candle but this was used on the alt on my altar um 
this was used to activate a new altar, okay? So as you can see here, there's lines. Boop, 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 boop. Now, oftentimes when I see a lot of lines, it has to do with psychic attacks. It has to usually do with psychic attacks or blockages to a particular goal that I'm asking for when I start to activate my candle or my spirit guides are saying, pay attention to me, pay attention to me. You are not paying attention to me. So they start to leave lines on your altar candles when you are being either psychically attacked or spiritually attacked, or if you are not paying attention enough to their wisdom and to their guidance and they're saying to you, slow down, okay? Usually this happens a lot during Mercury retrograde and during, this was burned during the retrogrades. This is why planets affect what happens on Earth. The moon affects what happens on Earth. The sun affects what happens on Earth, okay? This usually happens when you are moving too quickly through life and you're not paying attention. You're not being mindful. Your spirit guides will leave lines on your candles going hello hello you are moving too quickly through life you are being mind mindless and you are destroying your own life through your mindlessness okay so when you are um this usually happens went through retrogrades um telling you slow down rethink your decisions rethink your actions re um take a look at the people that you have around you there they may not all be beneficial to you um, maybe the place that you're at is not beneficial to you or um, maybe you light this candle for a being that doesn't want to work with you. Okay, so a lot of the times this also happens if that being that you're lighting the candle for doesn't really want to work with you. They're like, you're not my kid, though. You're not my kid. I love you, but you're not my kid. Go to so-and-so. <laughs> um, because we do have you do you do have certain spirits and orishas that have their children. And they, their children's requests are above other people's requests. So sometimes if you, if you petition a spirit and they don't really want to work with you um, and you see these, you see these, I would suggest burning another candle. And if it continues to be like that, I would suggest getting a reading um, or get, getting a consultation to find out if that being really wants to work with you or what is it that the being is trying to tell you, okay? A lot of the times, too, they will leave images in the candle along with the lines. Now, the lines usually represent uh, blockages, and the lines can also represent timing. So if you burn, if you use a altar candle to do a magical spell, a lot of the times the lines also represent timing. So usually the thicker the line, the longer the time period. The thinner the line is usually days or weeks before you start to see results for this work, okay? Now, you have soot sometimes, okay? Soot usually means that you need cleansing. So one day you may light your candle and it's burning perfectly clean and it's good to go and you have no issues and it looks like this. And then the next day you come in and you turn on your altar candle and it starts to have sooting. Um, this one has an angel right here. See it? So if it starts to have sooting, that means that you need a cleanse. Okay. This right here, this it's funny enough, this candle I pulled off of my archangel altar and it has an angel in soot. Okay. Um, it has a few images here. It has a few images. Um, it has a few images with horns. Okay. Which usually means that there may be some um, negative attacks that people are sending my way, um, which happens often. I'm a light worker, that is common. Um, there's also a lot of images of people, just people and crowds. So that, that doesn't surprise me because I, I am on the internet and people often see me. And um, when you have a lot of eyes on you, it also shows up, you know, your spirits are saying you need to take a cleanse or you need to um, protect more or you need to, uh, you know, do a protection bath or a, or a cleansing bath, um, sweetening bath of some sort. So they will they will often do that. Now, as you notice, this candle burned pretty clean until it got to here. And that's where the soot showed up. 
So that was the day that I really, really needed to take a cleansing bath, like really bad, a stronger bath than just sage, rosemary, and salt. I needed to take a bath with bushes from Dominican Republic, which I get imported. So I needed a stronger bath. And also, um, it also indicated to me, and then I spoke to my spirit guides, that I needed to go to my elder to get some cleansing done, which I did. So this also can indicate to you that you need to go to an elder to assist you to remove that stuff off of you because when you are in the energy sometimes you cannot tell the difference between good energy and bad energy so it's really important to get a professional cleansing done okay sometimes not always you can always you can always do some of the stuff for you but um sometimes you do need an elder to assist you okay so those are lines. So preferably we want when we burn our candles to end up with clear candles like this or clear with images, okay? Because that's what that indicates to us. Um, it can indicate to us who is working against us or what is working against us. If it is ourselves working against us, you will see a skull usually. Um, if, you, if your mind is working against you. Um, you will see a heart sometimes if your heart is working against you like if you think you want something but you're not really sure you don't believe in yourself enough it will sometimes show a heart sometimes it will it will be a crowd of people and usually when it's a crowd of people it's other people's opinions are affecting you are negatively affecting your mindset so you need to be careful how much you pay attention to other people's opinions okay so it's really important so we want now when you have a little bit of cloudiness um, it usually means that you will need an additional, let's say you do, um, a love candle and it looks like this. Okay. Let's say that you do a love candle and it looks like this. It looks a little bit cloudy, but it clean, it burned clean. You have good images on there. Then that means that I would highly suggest in addition to doing the candle to do sweet baths. Okay. So just like it's important to cleanse a lot of the times, it's also really, really important to sweeten sweeten means love baths abundance baths lucky um, money money baths things like that okay so um energy recharging baths is what i would highly suggest as well if, it, if your candle burns without an issue but it's a little bit cloudy then that means that it would be it would be good for you to um to take some baths if it is black if you have black, if you have soot all around the top, you need to take a cleanse. You have to cleanse because otherwise you're going to have major blockages for your manifestation. Your manifestation is going to take months, sometimes years, if you have a lot of soot, okay? Um, now, I've, seen, I've, I've done works where I have done works and done works and done works for a person, but they are so blocked by their own mind or by generational curses that it takes like a year or a year or a year and a half for them to receive what we did the magic for and then by the time they get it they're like i don't really know if i want it but now the person's in love with them again or is in love with them because we did so much magic to persuade that person but it was our own blockages that was getting in the way okay <laughs> but there then there are times when i do magic and the person that where my spirit guides and I do magic for someone and the person comes back in one day. So it depends on ourselves first. We must look within ourselves first to see what is blocking the pipe of magic, of energy for us first before we light that candle, okay? Because it's not always about other people. All right. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about before I take some questions, um, actually two more things I wanted to talk about is what candles do you want to have aside from your spelled candles if you are just doing altar candles for the blessing of your spirit guides what candles must you have in your possession okay in my practice there are three candles you must have in your in your possession that is a white candle a red candle and a black candle okay a white candle is used for activating and for bringing and drawing in positive light energy, energy that is um, high vibrational. So if you, are, if you are lighting, before you light a color candle on your altar, you should start with white, okay? 
White candles are used for activating altars. So you should always burn a white candle when you first light your altar, your new altar, before you even light a candle for that being. So let's say you have um, Anaisa Pie on the altar and her color is yellow. Before you even light her a yellow candle, you should be lighting her a white candle to invite her in. So a white candle invites in the being to your altar and invites in that energy. Okay, the next thing you should be doing is offering the four elements. Something that is earth, like food or flowers. Something that is water, like a beer or water or coffee. Um, something that is a symbol of air, which could be music or incense. And then your candle on your altar, which is the four elements are extremely important to invoke spiritual energy to assist you. Even your own spirit guides. Okay? So you must always start with a white candle. You don't have to listen to me, but this is what my experience has taught me. It is also what my grandfather taught me, um, who has been practicing for over 60 years. Okay. Um, so you always start with a white candle. Always have a red candle around in case you feel that the need to defend yourself. Red is known as a kind of all-purpose color in Vodun in the 21 Divisions um, because red is protective but red is defensive. It is also attractive. So what red does is it red attracts good things and repels negative energy or defends you. Red is a shield. Okay? Red is a shield that we use in our practice. Um in other practices it may be a different color, but for us, if you look if you research the history of Vodun or 21 divisions or any any be any practice that is based in Vodun practices, um Usually, you would use a red candle to defend yourself, okay? Because the color red is known as a holy color. It's known as a favored color of the spirits. It's even, a, it's even an important color in Hinduism. If you look at when they, when they get married, a lot of Hindu, Hindus wear red because red is the color of joy, of life, of, of vibrancy. Um, so that's very common in their belief system. Red is very known um, in the Eastern world and in Africa and in the Caribbean for, for having a lively ability and the ability to defend yourself. Okay. Now, the third color you should always have is a black candle. Now, most people think that when you're, doing, when you're lighting a black candle that it's bad, it's bad right? It's not. Um, the black candles amplify whatever your intent is. So if your intent is evil, then your intent, then it will amplify it. If your intent is protection, if your intent is defense, it will amplify it. So when you are burning a red candle, it's always good to burn a black candle or to burn a white and a black candle together. So the black candle will defend you and remove negative energy and the white candle will invite in positive energy. Okay, but before you light a black candle, you must start with a white candle first. Okay, um, the black candle, what it will do is it will amplify the energy of either the white candle or the or the red candle, um, which is why my return to sender candle has red on top and then it has like a dark purple. This dark purple here is 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 mixed in with black because that this will. This is dominating, okay? So the red is returning and uh, attracting good things, and then the black is dominating over your enemies, dominating over blockages, dominating and returning back to the person who sent it to you first, okay? That is called divine justice. And the spirits are all about divine justice. <laughs> Everything must be balanced in the universe. So if the karma isn't balanced, then spirits will balance the karma. So a lot of people say, "Well, I I do bad I do bad magic. I do evil magic all the time, and I never get in trouble." Yet, <laughs> um, if you are out there doing evil intent magic and you haven't gotten in trouble yet, 
it's gonna happen soon um it often happens just when you are the weakest when you are the most vulnerable um i have seen people who have done evil magic their entire lives and then when they are older because that is their most vulnerable 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 point right you're an older person you um it's harder for you to move around it's harder for you to maybe take care of yourself that's when spirit will strike that is when god will strike and give you your punishment so be careful with your intent realize that everything in the spiritual realm has a cost okay um the last thing that i wanted to talk about is when you snuff out the candle <laughs> when you snuff out the candle remember always snuff do not blow okay when you snuff out the candle, you can get one or two things. You can get a black smoke or gray black smoke, or you can get a white smoke. The white smoke means that your candle, that your spell was accepted. It was means that accept, it was accepted and spirit is already working on it for you. Same thing with your altar candles. If your um if you if you snuff it out and your candle and your smoke is is uh, clear, it's like white then that means that you are that your spirits are in your favor that god is in your favor okay if you snuff it out and you get like a gray a dark gray um black that means that your spirits are displeased it often means that you need to do something to please them offer them more offerings um maybe offer repentance for whatever you did wrong um get used to getting on your knees if you're working with spirits because that is the only be those are the only beings that i kneel to spirit because i know that if you if you show true remorse and you get on your knees and you ask for forgiveness they will forgive you and they will make your life better um so that smoke when you snuff it out if it's white then it means it was you are in favor and uh, in their favor and spirit is in your favor and god is in your favor if it is dark gray or black, then that means that you need to assess your life and look at where it is that you maybe you might have made a mistake or you might have said something um, that might have offended a spirit or might have offended God. Um, and at that point is when I would suggest getting on your knees and praying for forgiveness <laughs> and maybe offering them some offerings um, in repentance because and this is not to scare you this is not to say like oh you have to be serving servant servant like or whatever or or demeaned or whatever the reason why i say this is because we have to be we have to be able to acknowledge when we are wrong okay so you snuff a candle like this that's how you snuff a candle you leave it on there you wait till the candle goes out if you're doing a jar candle if not they have snuffers for candles that are that are pillars they have candles that you can um there's a little snuffer that has a little that's what they do at the, they use at church um they usually sell, sell them in candle shops they have little snuffers that you can um turn off uh those candles with the pillar candles never blow out a candle you're pushing your spirits away from the light. Um, someone asked something about what do puddles mean? If I talk about puddles, okay. So puddles, I don't, I'm not really sure what you describe as puddles, but if you're talking about a puddle like in the middle of the candle, um, what type of what puddles are you talking about, Guru? So that I know exactly what you're talking about, so we can um, discuss it. Are you talking about puddles like on the top of the candle or are you talking about puddles on the sides? Because we're not discussing the, today we're not discussing, um, oh, the six inch candles. Okay, yeah, we're not, we're not discussing pillar candles today. That's going to be for another day because pillar candles are much more complicated. I wanted to make this video more for beginners. Um, but usually the the pillar candles have four directions that they will that they will spill and have puddles in okay you have the spiritual direction the material direction the past and the future so you need to pay attention to where the where the drips fall okay um so you have to pay attention first to that okay now you have to pay attention to which direction the puddle falls in and then there will also be images 
oftentimes in the puddles. So you need to pay attention to the images in the puddles. So it, it does kind of relate a little bit to the, the jars. It will have a similar meaning, but it is a little bit more advanced. So I will do another video about puddles and about drips and things like that from, from pillar candles, okay? What if the flame goes out? If the flame goes out, that means that your your um, your request is being denied automatically from, by your spirit guides. It's like, no, this is not the beginning of the of the situation. This is not where you need to start. You need to pay it. You need to pay attention to what where you need to start first. If it goes out, take a cleansing bath. Maybe start it on another day. A lot of the times, too, it has to do with the day you're starting it. Your spirits don't agree with you starting it on a certain day because they know that it's going to make things more difficult for you to manifest. Um, someone asked about double flames. A lot of the times when a double flame happens, I've only ever really seen double flames when we're doing um, a love attraction. The double flames... If they are joined together, if the flame, if the fire is joined together, if you have double wicks or if you have a double flame, usually it does represent a unification. Okay. Um, now it depends on, on how the double flame takes shape. Okay. So you have to pay attention as well to that because usually if the, the flame can also give you images. So you can also see images in the flame. And that is another message from spirit. Like I said before, look up what that image means. The first thing that comes to your mind, look up what that image means. And that will be the message from spirit. Usually there's three wicks at the bottom if it is a if it is a pillar candle. We're not discussing pillar candles today. We are starting with the beginner's candles because I, I will have to make another video about pillar candles, okay? Um, now, a lot of times when there's three wicks, and that means there's a third person involved in the situation. So if you're doing a love spell and three, three wicks show up, that means that there is somebody standing between you and that person. There is somebody actively um, standing in between you and your desire with that person. That's the only time I usually see three candle wicks is if someone is in the way. I do do offerings for the spelled candles. So these spelled candle jars, you can just offer water or coffee or incense with it. You don't have to be too too complicated about it. Yes, you do see figures and if you if you do if you get my meditation candles, it comes with instructions and then the instructions will tell you that you need to write down whatever images you are shown during your meditation. Alrighty. So it, it the depending if it has multiple wicks, it, there must be some sort of usually some sort of love intention or some sort of love magic that that you are doing. Now popping sounds. That's a good idea. That's a good question because a lot of candles, a lot of altar candles tend to pop. Okay. Um. Now, like I said before, you need to pay attention to your intent. Someone just to, to finish off the note on the three on the three flames, three wicks that the per, that someone asked. If you for if you ask for clarity on something, then you most likely if you if you got three flames at the end, you need to do some sort of mind uncrossing. That means that you don't really know which way to go. You don't know you have your intuition is blocked. Okay. So I would highly suggest getting a consultation. If you can't make out what the message is of your own, then I would suggest going to an elder, getting a consultation, getting a reading, and finding out what is it that is blocking you. Okay? All right. Now, um, I was just about to answer another question. Um, right. When candles make popping sounds. A lot of the times when they make popping sounds, those are spirit. That is spirit speaking to you. A lot of the times they will make a popping sound in agreement. So if you are talking about something, pay attention to what you're talking about. Okay. Um, if a lot of the times my, my altar pops when I'm talking about something and um, spirit is agreeing with me, they're like, yes, that's exactly the message we're trying to get to you. Yes, you got it. Okay. So they'll start to pop. Oftentimes, and sometimes they'll even have little bubbles, and that's usually them speaking. 
Um, popping, uh, what in my experience, unless it's a giant pop and the candle breaks, it's usually good. However, if you have a giant pop and the candle breaks, that means that there is definitely some sort of attack, a spiritual attack that you need to be paying attention to because spirit is letting you know. And them breaking the candle was a way to try to break that, that, that spell that was sent against you. Okay, so that, that's why I always say it's good to keep a red candle on on your altar to, to protect yourself. Okay, um, a lot of the times too when they pop, it may mean that they also want to listen to music. I know that sometimes when they, um, when they pop a little bit, they are asking, they're requesting music. Especially the beings that love to dance, that love to have joy and um, happiness around, they will uh, pop, pop 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 um they may also be asking for some more offerings as well okay so we go, went over the spell candles and what to expect when you burn the spell candles um if you light the candle and it's having a low flame um let it burn for at least three to four hours and then snuff it out and and start it on another day okay um because it might also be the day the time may not be a good time we are in mercury retrograde right now so some things may be delayed that doesn't mean that you're not going to get them, but they're, they're going to be delayed because Mercury slows down, um, slows down magic. But if you start something during Mercury retrograde, even though it's slow during Mercury retrograde, it will start to speed up as soon as Mercury retrograde is over. Okay? That's usually how it works. Um, understand that spirit has a, has a ladder of how important your work is compared to somebody else's. Okay? <laughs> that doesn't mean you're less important to them than someone else but okay is is someone praying is someone doing a spell for healing because they have cancer or god forbid something else um and you're doing a spell to bring someone back that cancer spell is going to overweigh that that um that healing spell is gonna is gonna take higher priority over this love spell okay that doesn't mean you're not gonna get what you want it just means you have to be patient it just means you have to be patient spirituality is a lesson in patience okay so please be patient with spirit there you are asking them to fix your life that has been broken for years in a matter of days or months and that's not realistic you have to allow 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 for the magic to do its work allow for the faith and, and push it with faith and with hope rather than with doubt and with um with questions sometimes you ask too many questions sometimes we ask way too many questions i've had moments where i've i've driven santa marta and saint michael crazy and they have told me will you shut up already i have already told you it's coming in a certain amount of time stop <laughs> um archangel michael a little bit nicer than well both of them a little bit nicer than what i just put it but they will tell me you need to be patient you need to be patient Okay, this candle work pushed it, you know, to come faster to you in three months or four months rather than a year. Okay, so please be patient. Pay attention to what your spirits, what your candles are telling you. Okay, um, focus your intent when you are doing your work. You can, you don't have to, met, you don't have to necessarily meditate or repeat the chant the entire time that you are burning the candles for the three to four hours, but you should be doing it at least for the first 15 minutes, 30 minutes, um, and just and focus your attention on the candle for the three to four hours. You shouldn't be watching TV and something else that is filling your mind with other thoughts while you are waiting for the candle to burn. You should really be doing something. You could be doing something like, like cleaning your dishes or whatever. You can do things like that, but not things that are giving you thoughts and are distracting you from your magic that is why private workings are the price that they are because i must focus on your magic i must focus on the intent for your work the entire time that i am doing the magic as every other worker has to so it's really important that when you are doing your own magic that you pay attention and that you are focused on your magic and not watching tv not playing video games not doing everything else and not doing the most focusing on your magic okay all right, my loves, that is all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this talk. Um, I will be doing more magical videos because I love sharing about magic and the history of magic. Um, and I will talk to you guys later. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.